Hey everybody, this is Minion Soldier, and this is the Piracy Show. But on today's Piracy Show, we're not really going to be talking about Star Citizen directly. Rather, we're going to be talking about orgs and organizations within Star Citizen and the difficulty of trying to keep these groups of people together. Because, unfortunately... I don't know. Stop me if any of this sounds familiar. You know, a new Star Citizen patch is coming out and all of a sudden all these people on your Discord and in your org are like, oh my god, I can't wait to play the new patch. And everybody plays the new patch for like maybe a week, maybe two weeks. But then the bugs kind of get in the way, you know, trying to get everyone on the same server, trying to get everyone on at the same time trying to bring all these people together to play together and then you start running into the in-game bugs and it starts to create a number of issues for you as a player and so eventually you kind of get to a point where it's kind of like well I want to do this thing or I want to do that thing with everybody but you know gaming is still something that you want to do to have fun you want to feel like you're progressing you want to you want to enjoy it and when the game is kind of fighting against you it kind of it pushes you away eventually like you get to a point where it's like well maybe the next big patch and so chances are a lot of you have a lot of names on your organization discords of people who are like will dip in from time to time like how star citizen is it, is it going anywhere is it is it getting better and then you might not hear from them for a month or six months or a year. And so trying to kind of keep an org together is really challenging. Um, oftentimes when you, when you kind of create these gaming communities, if there isn't a specific game that kind of ties everyone together, it eventually just kind of it withers and dies or it generally it loses members there's always just this attrition that naturally happens when you don't have that one thing to kind of tie these groups of people together and you know not through star citizen but through other games i have seen orgs guilds corps clans whatever just wither and die i've seen them self-destruct i've seen all kinds of you know tomfoolery and craziness but when the game that kind of unites everyone together is just taking forever to get made, it becomes really difficult to kind of tie these people together and to kind of keep these friendships going when, if it isn't for Star Citizen, you, you don't really have that, that connective tissue that kind of brings it all together through that game. So I, I, I brought this up on our org discord, but it's something that in the back of my mind has been, you know, with me for years is, is there a game out there? Is there something else that we can use to tie everyone together and just kind of keep things going in the hopes that eventually, and then we'll all play star citizen when it's finished. I don't know. Does anyone else kind of feel the same way? Now, the first and probably the more obvious games to try would probably be Elite Dangerous, right? And we, this is a, you know, this is a game that we've actually discussed a couple of times recently for other topics. But Elite Dangerous, I think, is probably, you know, kind of like the closest cousin to something like Star Citizen that you can get right now, and it is multiplayer. Now, some people will have quibbles and, you know, dislikes for Elite or dislikes for Star Citizen. That's fine. It's subjective. Um, one of the ones that I agreed with initially, but then eventually kind of um, got over was the idea of, you know, how you navigate through menus and things like that, which I found completely counterintuitive. But, you know, after a point on my journey to the Corvette, I just... You know, I just started popping through the menus fairly easily, and so it wasn't that big of a deal. The only thing that really turns me off about Elite in terms of, you know, this is a good idea until Star Citizen comes out is the fact that you're limited to groups of four players. You, you can make a larger organization, but to play together, you're limited 
to a, a fairly small group. And that could be, you know, indicative of, you know, the difficulty in bringing a universe like this to life and the amount of people that you can kind of manage within an instance and have spaceships and planets and all these things going on at the same time. You know, Star Citizen is obviously going for you know, a different route or they're trying to reach a much more lofty goal in terms of group play. But overall, that was the, the main detractor against Elite Dangerous. I'm like, I'm willing to go back and look at it some more. I certainly would like to explore it some more. But when you're trying to keep an org of 50, 100, 200, 300 people together, that can be kind of... That can be kind of a turnoff to some people, but honestly, I would say that Elite is probably the best bet to kind of keep these, you know, to keep a group together. Because even if you have a large organization of people, you can still you can still create a situation where not everyone can play together, but everyone has someone to play with. Now, to get out of the space genre, another game that our org had a lot of success with was Scum. Now, survival games and certainly survival horror zombie games and things like that are probably not all that high on a lot of people's list. And they might think, you know, what are you talking about? These two games are completely unrelated. But this comes with a very intricate calorie management and vitamin management system the combat system is more reality based you face a lot of challenges and especially if you're playing on a server where the zombie damage is cranked up it can be a very dangerous and a very challenging game and i think that truth is is that that mimics a lot of the first person challenges that you're going to face in star citizen so we kind of looked at this as kind of like good practice of kind of learning to build yourself up and, you know, survive on your own and not just kind of going into a situation in kind of like a battlefield fashion, just all gung ho and you already got the guns and everything. But, you know, having to start from scratch and having to be very careful about managing your inventory and things like that. And, you know, we felt that this was a good parallel to certain elements within Star Citizen and a good starting place to learn from. And we've had a lot of success and we've had a lot of fun playing Scum. But, you know, it, and it, you, know, you know what? It did also meet the requirement that everyone could play together as long as the server that we were playing on was big enough. The real challenge, the real difficulty um, with playing this game was the fact that while there are certain realism based things within it, ultimately the challenge for us was finding a server to play on because unless we made the server ourselves, we would ultimately be kicked off of every server that we played on simply because we would step in and everyone knew their role and everyone knew what they were doing and everyone had been playing the game for so long and had been so practiced at it that we kind of, we were almost like a cancer on every server that we got on. Eventually, like the server GMs would just be like, you know, you guys got to go and we're just going to steal all your stuff or destroy your base or whatnot. And so we kind of got into this weird situation where if we made our own server, no one would join it. <laughs> and if we joined someone else's server, we would be kicked off immediately. Or, you know what? People would join our servers but they would leave very quickly. <laughs> so while we did feel that we were getting some good practice in and we were having a lot of fun, ultimately we faced some really, really difficult challenges in making this work. Cause we, I mean, we even experimented with the idea of we would force like our own members to play solo against other players that we would let play in a group, the, just the people that wandered onto the server. And even that didn't work. I mean, it was, it was pretty brutal. Now, one of the other games that I kind of came back to and I tr experimented with a bit was The Old Republic. 
believe it or not. I was I, I was checking the game out. I was seeing what was going on with the game and I was trying to figure out if I thought that it, it could hold enough story and enough personality to kind of keep people together. I, I wanted to experiment with it, but while it was fun on a personal level, I think it it still has an overall world that is mostly single player while there are group you know group play opportunities in general it you know it it doesn't really induce enough group play in in experiencing the game to i i think really tie an org together ultimately it just kind of felt you know it, it felt like more of a personal experience and less of a shared experience. Though I do have to admit, taking the uh, cosmetic options and using them, manipulating them to create uh, a bounty hunter Sith warrior was pretty damn cool. And I might go back to that from time to time. Now, Conan Exiles is a weird game because that's a game that we've had a, a lot of success with over the years. There's a lot of people in Scum who have played this game or even some who do still currently play this game. It is of that, you know, kind of survival genre, but it's not really zombies. It's, you know, it's demons, it's monsters, it's beasts in the world, and it has advanced a lot over the years. You can now finally tame mounts. You can, you know, change the appearance of your character through mods that you can get through the Steam Workshop. You can do a lot of cool stuff with it. But even with some of the promising updates that they're indicating for the end of 2020, it ultimately suffers the same fate as Scum, which is we can start our own server, but we just end up playing with ourselves. Or we can get on someone else's server and pretty much just get kicked off if we play as a group. So, you know, there are survival elements, but they're nowhere near as in depth as the survival elements in a game like Scum or in a game like Star Citizen are going to be. So while it was a fun world to play with, I don't know, personally, I just never felt all that connected to it and it, it remains one of those games where it's it, it's like Star Citizen. You go and you play it for maybe a week every few months, you know, for a lot of people. And apart from that, you just kind of go like, eh, all right, I'm ready to go play something else now. Now, World of Warcraft is a game that ultimately you have to want to play. And right now, even though I am an avid player, it's... It's not something that you can really kind of it's it's not something that you can just flat out join and just start playing right away. It ha you know, it has a number of issues, some of which are the fact that unless you unless you've been playing for the entirety of the current expansion, which is BFA at the time of this recording, it's it doesn't really offer any incentive for a new player to join in especially right now with so many systems layered upon systems upon systems it's something that you really have to have been playing since the beginning of the current expansion if you really want to get any enjoyment out of it and i've actually turned people away from the game because of those reasons because you know just to build up a character to be competent to be able to play with other players and do dungeons and raids and things like that it would require like tens of hours of just prepar you know preparation type gameplay not just to level up but to gear up and to get all these systems moving that it is simply just it's not something that I I would put somebody in front of and say you need to do these things and then we can play the game together that and the fact that it really bars certain you know comparisons that you can make for the reasons of you know the way players interact socially to discuss various topics it isn't something that holds a lot of 
or really any commonality with Star Citizen beyond, you know, using it to kind of explain social interactions at times or just to show something fun. It really, it, it doesn't connect to Star Citizen at all. So to find that kind of crossover with people in the Star Citizen community is going to be fairly rare. Now, another game that I experimented with as well, because it had piracy and it had open world PVP, was Sea of Thieves. And there was, you know, like, I mean, those are two common points, but the more I thought of it and the more, like, I was playing this game, I, I had fun with it. I had a lot of fun with it. And I might, you know, it might be one of those games that, once again, I dabble in from time to time, but... The more I thought about it, the more I kind of went through all these different games that I play and all these different games that I kind of experimented with, is while they had certain elements that I thought had merit or, you know, had something in common with Star Citizen, whether it's large groups, open world PvP, piracy, spaceships, you know, sci-fi, any survival mechanics, any of these things that you could kind of put together, you know, they had different little components, but they didn't have the total package that Star Citizen is supposed to have. Ultimately, I decided it was futile. It was futile because, you know, as I've been kind of going through and talking about just some of these games, and there's so many more. I mean, we talked about things like Star Trek Online and all kinds of stuff. I mean, we've been, we've run the gauntlet of so many games. But what brings Star Citizen fans together is the fact that Star Citizen encompasses so many pieces and so many different aspects of so many games, and that's its appeal, right? Is it is kind of like promising to be the total package right in terms of player interaction with the world in terms of immersion in terms of lore and storytelling and all these things it 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 kind of represents that you know what you wish those other games would eventually evolve to be right a larger much more open world persistence you know, group play, open world PvP, piracy, whatever you're looking for, you, these are all elements that exist in very limited fashions in all these different games. That's what brings everyone together. And without that being a fully functional, fully fleshed out things, people are just going to go back to their little spheres and just dabble in those games and wait for Star Citizen to be completed. So if you're looking for a game that kind of does what star citizen is supposed to do star citizen is the first one to really attempt that and to really you know try for that goal which may or may not be impossible so i don't think that there really is a game out there that you can use to kind of unite a star citizen community and say hey you know what let's all play this until star citizen you know comes out i don't know i mean you you can leave some suggestions for games in the comments below but ultimately trying to pursue uh, trying to pursue that I think is just futile and we just gotta survive and thrive as best we can until we get to a point where Star Citizen closes enough game loops that people are like oh no I want to play this all the time Thank you for watching. So, 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 so if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42 development, please follow, please follow, please follow us on our social media channels. See you soon.